I'm cut. I'm just cut. <laughs> go down, go down! Three locations, one crew, 24 hours in haunted Derby. <laughs> Welcome to Most Haunted. This week we've come to one of the most paranormally active cities in the world, Derby. Normally we would spend 24 hours in just one location, but this week we're spending 24 hours in three. Derby Heritage Centre, Laverty's Pub and the Bell Inn. All of them have ghost sightings, paranormal activity, poltergeist activity and also this week we have a murder mystery to solve. Derby through the ages has been a Roman fort, trading post, Saxon village and Viking town. Over the years it has always been a very busy city, a crossroads of history. Thousands of people have passed through this bustling place each day for hundreds of years. Coaching inns made a fair trade in their heyday and with that trade came highwaymen, robbers and murderers. The Bell Inn has an unsolved murder mystery that has disturbed many people for years. An old boys' grammar school was built around 1554 on top of a burial ground of plague victims. It's now known as the Heritage Centre. Lafferty's Inn, formerly known as the George, dates back to 1693. It has encountered many sightings and disturbing paranormal occurrences. All of these locations are supposedly haunted and have disturbed its occupants for years. Tonight, we hope to solve two murder mysteries and who the ghosts could possibly be. Derby is the most haunted city in the country. There are more ghosts here in the centre of Derby than, than even York. Um, I think it's basically because of its location, almost in the centre of the country. It's meant that ever since there's been life on this planet, this place where Derby now lies has been a crossing of the ways, and everybody has passed through. And of course, because of that, we've got trackways and ley lines. I think Derby is basically powerhouse of energy that attracts spirits and ghosts. One of the most haunted locations here in Derby is the Bell Inn. The ghost of a Victorian lady has been seen in the bar area. She materialises in front of everybody and then walks through the wall. But probably the most famous room here at the Bell Inn is room 29. And this is the infamous Room 29. Now the reason why this room is so famous is because the ghost of an 18th century serving maid has been seen in here many times. The reason why she haunts this room is because she was murdered in here by having her throat cut. Mediums have sensed her, the staff have seen her, and it's now basically just empty at the top floor. And the staff hate to go up there. A lot of them won't go on their own. I think the crew tonight will find it quite unnerving, especially in the bell. Uh, it's very dark, very cold, very eerie. Um, I'm expecting Yvette to go off her nut as usual. And we have to remember that people are afraid of the dark. They will be seeing things out of the corner of their eye that don't exist. This is Laverty's Bar, formerly known as the George Inn. Now, in 1994, workmen made a very important discovery. They unearthed this human skull directly beneath the pub. And since then, violent poltergeist activity has been occurring here on a regular basis. People will be standing at the bar only to watch their pint glasses fly across the room. If they were holding a pint glass, it would smash in their hands. Also, the spectre of a Victorian lady has been seen on many occasions. So does this skull belong to the Victorian lady. Hopefully we'll find out later. Not only that, but there's an even more haunted room and that's downstairs in Lafferty's bar. 
The cellar in Rafferty's pub seems to have a personality all of its own, or some people would call it poltergeist activity. Things move down here of their own accord, and a lot of objects like to fly off this particular table. So what we're going to do tonight is do a trigger object experiment. We're going to place some paper on the top of this table, put objects on top, hopefully they'll move on their own. The George, which is now Lafferty's, was one of the most famous coaching inns here in Derby, and we had 18 of them. So much life and death went on in coaching inns that there's bound to be lots of sightings, but there's something rather special about that place, a skull, which has caused so many things to happen, so much poltergeist activity. But even before that, sightings of other ghosts have been seen in that place. A man in 18th century costume and long hair, a Victorian lady. And it's very active even to this day. Derby Heritage Centre is actually built on an old graveyard and the bodies that were buried here were victims of the plague. In Tudor times the building was a boys grammar school and there's an awful lot of paranormal activity here. Now one of the most common ghost sightings is that of a little boy. He's been seen upstairs in the dormitories. He wears a leather waistcoat and has blonde hair. He just walks around the dormitories and disappears through the walls. This place goes back certainly to 1554. Um, it was a grammar school and so there's been an awful lot of life and death gone on here because obviously it was a boarding school and there are some very interesting ghosts. There's footsteps, bumps and bangs, things move down here in the tea room, doors open and people actually follow you up the stairs. You can hear footsteps behind yours. I was up upstairs getting the, the mask off one of the dummies to prepare for the ghost walk. It was about 10, 10 o'clock at night and it was really quiet and I was just about to take the mask off and then I heard these sort of two, three kids come running up the stairs and come into, this, come into the room and I just looked round quick because I thought they were there and there was nothing there and they were just sort of walking towards me and it, it wasn't in my head, it was just they were, they were there but I just couldn't see him. <laughs> I, I, I do believe in ghosts. I think there is something there. But, I mean, I don't, I don't mind if I do see anything. But I've, I, I've never seen anything. Well, I think the locations that have been chosen tonight are ideal for investigation. Uh, they, they've all got active poltergeist uh, phenomena, uh, which occurs on a regular basis. Now, I've spent the last couple of days doing the baseline testings. So we've got the average temperature, the average EMF reading. I've checked for floorboards that creak, windows that might cause drafts. So we've got all the readings to go against. Uh, we're going to set up a couple of experiments. Hopefully, we can catch some of that on, on camera. Whilst Phil, our paranormal investigator, went to Lafferty's pub to set up the trigger object experiment, our EMF meters were showing high unexplainable readings in the Heritage Centre. <laughs> So something is coming and going. Just, just arc it back. Now, listen. Wow. And this is where the, um, of course, the graves are under there, aren't they? Yeah. Now it's back again. readings already occurring, we were all excited about the night to come. 
Derek Akora, our medium, knows that our investigation was in the city of Derby, but he has no idea which locations we had chosen to spend 24 hours in. Would he be able to help the Most Haunted crew solve some of Derby's most haunted mysteries? Twelve crew members, all with different views on the paranormal. Some believers, some skeptics. Whether they believe or not, all of us were hoping that tonight we would experience something that we wouldn't forget in a hurry. Derek Akora, our medium, was the last member of our crew to arrive. We could now begin our long night of investigating haunted Derby. The Bell Inn was our first stop, room 29. It was right at the top of the building and was haunted by an 18th century serving girl. Could Derek give her an identity and tell us why she still roamed the upper floor? The energies of this corner here. Yeah, okay. I want to scream in memory. I want to scream and I want to scream and I want to scream. An actual fact of a woman's presence, a young woman. I feel that this lady's life was taken away. In what way? I feel as if, you know, the energy that's coming to me as if I want to, um, it's like I'm, I'm cut, I'm just cut, mm. okay? And, okay, she saved, she saved. I feel she was just a, an ordinary, bless her, an ordinary serving woman, serving girl. I felt she carried child. She carried child. It was a boy child that didn't wasn't here, didn't come to the earth. So she lost a child? Yes. She lost a boy child. Jill, Jill, Jilly. It sounded like Jill Jilly. 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 Oh, and he gives me Morgan. Jilly Morgan. Morgan. Who 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 murdered her? A man who had very, very, very strong connections. She feared him. She was, she was under him. She feared him. I think maybe if we go to a, to the other rooms, maybe it might help to pick up who this yes. man was. Yes, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, take it off me. I get this like facial hair placed on me physically here. So did it, was he he the he was, he was the murderer? Most definitely. What are you doing? I just wanted to feel this here. This doesn't feel right, you see. Um, to the energy I'm trying to link in with. If I just may. To the two figures has been blocked from me. The last two are 17. Something 17. Right. Um, and I feel it's the energy of this man that's trying to block that from my view. Do you think her being murdered could possibly have anything to do with the fact that she, that she was with child? I feel that there's a great um, reason for you to ask that question. I feel that it's most definitely linked. Let's go into this last room. Please, yeah. Let's go into this continue. last room. Yeah. Maybe that energy will yeah. build. I don't, I don't like this part. You don't here. like this no, about now? No, I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it at all. I feel that the strong probability was that the child, in whatever way, was taken away and then the actual no. killing. I feel that's what had happened. I hope I'm wrong with this, but I feel as if... If he's done this and taken away across the belly, so to speak, you know, to the child and then the murder, well, he's just a, a barbaric beast, an evil, evil soul. Who is he? We need, we need a name, if you can, Derek. Oh, OK. 
Okay, thank you. The one who did this and the one who still comes back here, um, his name is John. John. Now, come on, Sam, see, get a bit more. John, 50s. Is that of age? I feel this man was in his 50s. Late 40s. Early 50s. He looked older than what he, what he was, in actual fact. Um, now that Derek had given the girl a name and had given us an understanding to her death, Room 29 was not a place anyone would want to spend any time in. What else would the most haunted crew uncover in Haunted Derby? So Derek had given us an identity to the poor girl who'd been murdered in the Bell Inn. What would he pick up in our second location? A human skull had been unearthed beneath Lafferty's pub in 1994. The identity of its owner has never been found, or why they died. Would we be able to put an end to the mystery? Right. Okay, Derek. This is Lafferty's. Right, okay. A lovely pub, but yes. uh, steeped in history. Just want to walk around yes. and have a little bit of a feel Can of the place? Can we do that? Yeah, yeah of course. I love that. Yeah, great. Ooh. Now it's funny, you know, the fact because just as I'm like coming to this area now, as we walk through, and there's this warmer atmosphere in this inn or what have you, and yes, rushing past me seemed to be like this fury of people that were, um, well, the only way I can describe is if I was in like uniform and swords and things like that for some reason, and like. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Right. I've got very short hair, haven't I? Mm. Suddenly I've got... There's someone with me. This is not residual, this is a man. He's there, he's here. Yes, he's with me, at the back of me here. Ooh. And this long jacket coat effect here. Very strong forearms with this man. Did you get the feeling he was associated with this place? Yes. Yeah. Very strong. And the very thin man, but tall. And it's like his energy wants to just like walk, you know, and been housed walking like this. Long, dark brown hair. Tall, but thin. Not heavy set. Can you give me a name? Theo. It sounded like Theo. 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 Is, what's Theo showing for? Is that Theodore? Theodore. 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 Come over here because I want you to have a look at something. Okay. Yes. This was unearthed. It's a human skull. It's a female. A female. At the point, bump in there. So it was an instrument, okay? Yes. That punctured here. Right. It's him then. Can I just put what the connection together? It's him. You mean the man with the long hair and the Yes, now I feel that he, okay, and the reason why he's grounded here is because at some point or other he would have done the damage to this individual. Oh so he he murdered the female. I feel would have done this, yes. OK? Um, and I keep on getting the name Theo. Theo, Theo, Theo. Who... Who is this poor person that lost his son? Is that Sally? Is that Sally? Sally? Sa Sal? Sal? It sounded like Sally. Right. Sally. Right. Sally. Huh. May I go up to the proprietor just yeah. a moment? Yeah, You didn't expect this, did you? No, I didn't. Come on, come on. Okay, can I say to you, behind your bar here, okay, um, you should, uh, uh, in this last monthly cycle, this last month, I feel there should have been some kind of disturbance or connections around a person that works here in this 
in, if I may call it. Because mm -hmm. that energy's like surrounding me now. I want to go down, okay? Yeah. And say to you, activity, okay, downstairs would be more noticeable than up here. Would you understand that? Yeah. And that's because of the name Theo, okay? And it's up and down, up and down. And it would cause all kinds of, um, if you want to term it, paranormal activity down there. However, I want to say a lady in this place here, in this inn, would have experienced some kind of, I don't know, touch, and it frightened a little bit, a lady. Mm -hmm. Because that energy is collectively coming around me as if to say, ha ha, I did that, ha ha, I did that, and this is Theo. Mm. Theo. Can I just say, Derek, that you, you're spot on with a man in the blue with the long hair, he's been reported. Okay, he's been reported. Times, yes. Yeah. And he's yeah. tried to draw his attention, and I feel he's definitely responsible. Can I, I know I shouldn't ask this, where, where in this place was this found? Cellar. Good. This is let's it. Let's go to the, on, cellar, let's go the cellar, please. Okay. Can I take that down? Yeah. Okay, we might be able to link in quite strongly then. So according to Derek, the ghost of the man dressed in blue could have been one of the soldiers that was responsible for the death of this woman. Yes. This skull definitely belongs down here. It was covered. Okay. It was covered. Yes. Also, when it was uncovered, if I may say with respect to you, why didn't you take it out right away? Because I feel it was found, spotted, but left there for a while. The story goes that it was unearthed and they left it there because they thought it was a recent body. Yeah. And the police and whatever it was called. Are you able to, to give us a date? Yeah, um, it's early 17th century, this. This is not new, okay? Do we know what, what connection those two would have had with each other? She would have been in awe of this man, this man's position. I would have done, you know, it's like him clicking his fingers and she was there to his beck and call. And, um, which is very rare for me to pick up on anything psychometrizing of a sexual nature, but I feel definitely, again, we have something where this man had this soul under control. He most definitely killed this female. He killed her. It wasn't a sword, it was something very sharp. Yeah. She's down on her knees and it's bumf! What the, the instrument that you see, or not? I feel it was a... something... it's more rounded that. Oh. Like this. It's, that is something similar, and this part here... come down... and, you know, it's because she was down. There's just a feeling I get with it. I want to go down like this as if I'm pleading. We'll be interested to see exactly what that type of instrument is called. Yes. We'll find that out. Yes. It is like a mini scythe, isn't it? It's interesting. The picture Derek has drawn is very similar to a sickle. The sickle has been around since the Bronze Age and was used as a harvesting tool. In 1850, it was replaced by the scythe. The sickle shape and design have been used as a working tool and as a weapon throughout the years. Our last location had encountered many strange paranormal occurrences. Derby Heritage Centre, once an old boys' grammar school, had strong poltergeist activity. OK, Derek, this is the Derby Heritage um, tea rooms. Are you yeah. picking anything up in here? Well, interestingly enough, that when I first walked in, I got this, like, flurry. That's the only way I can put it at the moment. Now, would you believe it? This flurry, I believe, is visitation. It's not evil, bad, or anything like that, but a visitation by children. Oh. However, there's also a mainstay, if we can just walk further yeah. up here. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. As if I go into this section, and then 
it seems as if I get then a transference of a man's figure that seems to be standing, firstly with his hands, side on like this, and then like that. In actual fact, can I say, mm. in this kitchen area here, I feel at times there are probably implements we see cups and saucers and what have you. I feel as if things are moved here, things are shifted, things maybe even, you know, elevated and thrown. Now, I don't know if that is actually being experienced here, but I feel as if it should have been. Right. Honestly, I do. But, oh, here we go. That's better. The person that comes and links here, okay, the person who stands stead side on and does this, most definitely, is John Cotton. John Cotton. John Cotton. John Cotton. Yeah. John Cotton. John Cotton. And John Cotton actually attended this when it was a school. Oh. One of one of the famous characters. Right. Now this man and his energy, have he? Okay, would come here. Why he just wants to stand here? You know, suddenly be standing side on like this, and then doing that gesture. And it seems as if. You know, yes, I'm, um, I'm looked upon, you know, I've got this, like, uppermost, uppermost respect for myself, meaning him. However, I've got this, I don't know, hidden agenda. Mm. And I feel, I don't know why I want to say this, but I feel he got into trouble over it. Mm. And I don't quite understand what it means. Um, I know nothing of the building, naturally, but I feel as if he do a number of things, pointers, send the taps on, you know. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised whether there was, at times, uh, uh, quite a lot of breakages. Mm. Maybe when someone was around, maybe that, naturally you can check that out. Mm. Yeah. But that's, I feel very drawn to that. It's like, he'll come along and go like that, and watch the body language on the person who's in the physical, and watch the reaction of them. Right. Yeah? John Cotton. John Cotton. Mm. So there you go. John Cotton was born in 1595 and was once a pupil at the grammar school at the turn of the 17th century. He became famous for his strong Puritan beliefs. He was threatened with legal action in 1632 as these beliefs angered many important people of his time. He relocated to Boston, USA. With all this new information, the crew were eager to try to capture some kind of paranormal activity. We had split into three groups to cover the three different locations. Richard Felix, our historian, Phil and myself were sent to the Bell Inn and Room 29. Other members of our crew included Rick, our cameraman, Stuart, Kath, our makeup lady and Victoria. They went to investigate the Heritage Centre. And our producer Carl, Craig, our cameraman, Tom and Andy were to quite literally sit it out at Lafferty's Inn. Now we're going to the ladies' toilet because that's apparently where the all things happened. It was Craig, Andy, uh, Tom and myself. You right, Tom? Hey. Oh, shit. After you. Right, tell you what, there's a wall just here. There we go. There's a mirror, mirror. Actually, you go and sit in that toilet. Make sure the seat's all down, because otherwise you fall through. Do you want to explain why we're in the to right. ladies' toilet? Oh, well, we, we, we come into the ladies' toilet purely because this is where apparently a lot of activity has been seen, or the grey lady or lady in grey has been seen in here. Um, people have been washing their hands and they've seen someone standing next to them who disappears. And we've come in to actually try and see if we can feel anything. Now, all I feel is very warm, and I'm standing by a radiator here. Um, but I know Tom's in the, the first cubicle here. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, Tom? Um, calm. Do you feel frightened in any way? Do you feel... I can't say I feel frightened at all. No? That's probably me. Andy. Yeah. How do you, how do you feel in here? Do you... As I said, it's just warm. I can't feel any, um, nothing. Oh, nothing, uh, sort of, uh, un oh, oh, shit, it's all bang on. <laughs> Maybe I should it's never have said that. Yeah. Should just look, if I don't sit on the toilet, I find that quite nerve wracking. I'd rather sit on the If anything is going to happen, because it's warm in here, if anything happens, we're going to feel it because the temperature is supposed to drop. I don't know. Mm. This, that's actually a good point, Andy, because if it if it does if 
the temperature drops in here. Um, it's very warm, so I'll lock this off and let's see if anything happens. Okay, now let's go into room 29. Well, this is something I said I'd never do because uh, I stand outside this building sometimes four nights a week and tell the stories that spooks everybody to death about this room. And here I am, two o'clock in the morning, in this room. <laughs> the only thing I can say I'm glad about is that I'm not alone. No, we're not, are we? Um, You're right, Phil. No yeah. way must we leave each other. No. Just checking how strong this draft Because I'm telling you, I'm not stopping in here, am I? Okay. Where do you think we should sit? In a corner facing the doorway. Derek was freaked, really, about this area here in this room. Uh -huh. So whether we should sit here. Let's sit down and do communication. Come on. Okay. My goodness. Never thought I'd ever be up here doing this. Is there anybody here in this room with us? We don't mean any harm, we're just very interested. Please, please show yourself to us. Show us what you can really do. Let's all, let's all sit here in the middle, sort of more in the middle. I like to see something with cops and coffee. <laughs> let's, all, uh, let's all sit down here. Oh, oh gosh, sorry. I'm sorry. I really am sorry, I'm jumping. All seem to be quiet so far, but would any of us feel or experience anything ghostly in one of the world's most haunted cities? <laughs> The most haunted crew has split into three groups to cover the three haunted locations in Derby. Patience was proving to be the most important tool that all of us were having to use. If there is anybody here in the room with us, can you make yourself known to us, please? If there's anyone there in this room, please try to show yourself to us. What was the name of the guy that Derek picked up on? John Cotton. John Cotton. John Cotton. It would be nice for something to happen. About the chair. I don't know. Derek said they would I think, I think it would actually be nice for something to actually fall off the counter. The candles keep, really do keep playing tricks on me. That one over there. I know it's probably near a draft. Happen. They read it probably. Oh my God, God, don't do that to me. That's I'm just. Sorry. It happened quick and it scared me because we're. Oh my God. The red light just went off and it made a real sound. Okay, well, it's, it's gone off now. It's probably been on a set of. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. It's all right. <laughs> right. Should we have a little wonder? That's a good idea. Do you want me to go first? No. Richard does ghost walks. No, no, no. Wait, slow down. Wait, 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 wait. Ghost. Supposedly there was worse feelings in here than there was in the other room. This is the one where Derek had problems, wasn't it? Was it? Why? Um, not problems. I mean, he was getting blocked by the, oh, the entity yeah. or spirit that was here. Yeah, there's no electrics up here. Mm -mm. No. That's for definite. You're not getting anything on that, are no. you? It's, it seems too quiet for a place like this. You're absolutely right. It's like it's, it's too... Before the storm, oh, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't... Was, it's like... It's either going to stay quiet or it's something's... something big's going to kick off. Um, well, I hope it doesn't... Well, in a way I do, but in a way I don't. Oh, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> Glass all around here for some reason.
try to show as you're here, try to rap something or tap something or make a noise, prove to us you're here. was definitely heard coming from upstairs. The noises were not footsteps, but dragging and thumping sounds. At the Heritage Centre, Kath and Victoria had decided to venture upstairs to what used to be the dormitories in the old boys' grammar school and where the ghost of a little boy has been seen regularly. Come on. Right, we're going up into the old dormitory. It's the wind, I can hear the wind. Oh, hear it really. Yeah, it really... Okay, careful. Right. This, this, I think, is the room that used to be the old dormitory. Okay. Is it? Hold my hand. Hold my hand. <laughs> Do you want to... Go down, go down! No, no, it's okay! Oh, God, what's up, what's up, what's I'm sorry, up? I'm sorry. What's up? What's up? No, 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 I don't know, I heard rustling. All right, all right, all right. Calm down. I just can't. You heard rustling where? Coming from the right, wasn't it? Yeah, from the right. Rick, are we going up? Yeah, we're going up. You're coming up? Yeah, you too? Come on, then. Oh, we'll do that. So, do you want me to go first? Yeah. Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry, Kath. As you, as you like, oh God, it was over here. It was like where? Here, over here. Tell me again what happened. It just as we came in, it was like a rustling over here, and I know I shouldn't react that quick and dash away. I should stay and see what it is. But I'm sorry, I just can't help it. I just panic. So Richard, you introduce yourself. Is there anybody in here with us? For the last ten years I've stood outside this building talking about you. Could you make us a sign? Could you let me know or let us know if you are here? If when I'm standing outside talking about you, you are actually up here listening to me. Would you just give us a sign? Just to let us know. Yeah, then that. Yeah, but it could be a wind, it could no, be a draft. It couldn't possibly be. Why? No way is that sort of wind up no, here. There's no, not. there is not. Oh my god, don't leave me on my own, don't leave me on my own. Will you come with us? Yeah. We'll all go together. Listen, that door can't slam shut because, Why? because it's the draft would be coming from the corridor. Are we locked in? I don't know. Upstairs, came in and walked upstairs, and the door yeah. well, did do that. It stops every time you stop. Now, look, I'm, I'm, my fingers are much stronger than any draft that's in here. Still going, look, it's not. I still think that the, the, there was the draft that shut that door. It was a slam. It was a slam. It, was a slam. it did that. Yeah. And come on, where's the draft? There isn't. I have to say, there isn't one. There isn't a draft. I must admit, the the way the door sounded as though it shut when we were upstairs, it did sound as though it had some force behind it. It did have some force behind it. 
Was it a draft or was it paranormal? Whatever the cause of the door slamming, it scared us to death. It wasn't until we had finished filming in Derby that we came across this footage. After Phil, Richard and myself had left room 29, our locked off night vision camera caught the lantern shaking. We know from the baseline test that there were no significant drafts in room 29. It could have been simply a lorry passing outside the window, causing strong vibrations. We're not sure what to make of it. What do you think? It had been a very quiet night and we were all surprised that we hadn't caught any light anomalies on camera and nothing had moved in our trigger object experiment. As a last attempt to try to capture something paranormal, we decided to conduct a seance in room 29 at Lafferty's Inn. But after an hour of trying to communicate with the supposed spirits, nothing happened. It had been a long, exhausting 24 hours and we were all pleased when daybreak eventually came. Well, as we commenced um, the investigation at the Bell Hotel, um, as soon as I went inside and to the upper floors, um, there was screams, and then suddenly, uh, to realise that this young lady's life, her life force, was just being taken away from her. That was so, so, so sad. And then go a little bit further um, on the upper floors to then come into links with um, residual thought of the person that did this horrible act. That alone was like my baptism to Derby. I was a bit disappointed when we did the, the vigil with Yvette, Richard and myself. I was hoping for any kind of activity. And it wasn't until the last 10 minutes that we were there that the downstairs door was slammed too. Now, we went down, back down the stairs, checked it over, and unless you actually physically pushed the door to, there was no way that it, it could have banged. There was, there was no draft. Not saying that's a ghost, but it is unexplainable at the moment. As usual, when our filming is finished, Dr. Matthew Smith watches through the footage and gives us his unbiased opinion on some of the experiences the Most Haunted crew captured during the night. When Yvette, Phil and Richard were up in room 29, and Richard asked the spirits to give uh, a sign of some sort, and the door slammed just at the right moment. Now that could be a ghost responding to Richard's question, but also, it could be simply a draft or some other normal explanation causing the door to slam. Would you just give us a sign? Just to let us know. <laughs> uh, what's kind of interesting is it did slam just at the right time to it appear to be some kind of sign from the spirits. I think what this um, segment also shows is that when people have a strong will to believe in ghosts, then they're quite keen to kind of explain any simple bang or knock in terms of ghosts. And I think it shows us quite nicely here with Richard trying to seek an explanation in terms of the paranormal. And then a vet may be saying, this could simply be a gust of wind. It didn't do that, it did that. The EMF recordings are particularly uh, impressive and unusual because not only was a vet passing the, the uh, reader over the same place a number of times, um, and on some occasions getting very, very high readings, and on some occasions getting no readings at all, that tells us that it's, it doesn't appear to be um, some hidden source which could be explained, say, in terms of um, computers or some of the cameras. And also, the readings on the EMF reader were actually extremely high, much higher than you would expect from um, the cameras or any other pieces of equipment. So they're kind of quite unusual in that respect. Whether or not that means there's some kind of ghost energy or whether there is some other still hidden source that we don't know about, I'm not too sure, but it's something that's worth investigating further. <laughs> what? 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 The, 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 red light, the red light went on. Well, here we saw Victoria was getting very frightened simply by a light going off on the coffee machine. And I think this perhaps shows us that when it's very late at night and you're in a location which you're told is haunted, and you're actually there actually trying to look for ghosts, then I think it, we can be set up into interpreting anything as being a bit paranormal. And also it frightens us when it's not what we, you know, it comes at a time when we're not expecting it. So I think it just shows us that sometimes we can psychologically set ourselves up to be very frightened by something which is, would normally be quite mundane and simple. Three locations in 24 hours had kept us busy. It had been a long night where our patience and nerves were tested. 
There is so much more to uncover in Derby, and maybe one day we will go back, but never to Room 29. Sleep tight. Yeah, 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 yeah